Good morning everyone! So for today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about different ways you might be ruining your skin because there's a lot of information out there on the internet or in the world and I've seen some things that I wanted to clarify with you guys or maybe open your guys' eyes up to something you're doing and you might not even realize is bad for your skin. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Side note. Do you love my jewelry? It's from my collection, the Storytellers Collection. Link down below. Wink, wink. <laughs> so way you might be ruining your skin, number one, is leaving a clay mask on too long. Now, if you've been on my channel, I've talked about this in the past, but technically you're not supposed to leave a clay mask on your skin to the point of cracking or really drying. A clay mask is finished on your skin if you can touch it and there's no transfer on your fingers. Basically, it'll still be kind of moist, but kind of hard to the touch. Clay masks are obviously very drying. That's kind of the point of clay masks. They're for detoxifying, pulling out impurities and excess oil and dirt that's sitting in the pores of your skin. However, when left on too long, clay masks tend to pull out too much oil and basically kind of ruining that barrier on your skin. Because that barrier actually does serve a purpose in protecting your skin. So, clay masks, I love them. I think there's definitely a purpose for them in your skincare routine. However, you just want to be careful that you're not leaving them on too long. Another subtle way you might be ruining your skin is actually over exfoliating. Now, this is an issue that I see quite a bit as far as exfoliating goes. There tends to be a lot of confusion around the topic. Now, exfoliating is a very important tool when it comes to taking care of your skin just because it helps increase cell turnover. It gets rid of any dead skin cells that are sitting on your skin and kind of blocking either your pores or blocking your skincare from sinking in. Realistically, you want to physically exfoliate your skin maybe one to two times a week. And it just really depends on your skin type, how sensitive your skin is, what your skin can handle, so you really know what's best. But just try not to physically exfoliate your skin more than one to two times per week. In my head, less is better when it comes to exfoliating because obviously your skin has its own natural process of renewing itself every 28 days, so it's not something you want to mess with too much. But like I said, everyone's skin type, skin care routines are going to be different. But just keep in mind, I do see a lot of over exfoliating happening that is unnecessary and most people don't need that much exfoliating. Another subtle way you could possibly be ruining your skin is something that I'm guilty of. It's getting dry shampoo or hair products, hairspray, mousse, what have you, onto your skin. Now I know that I'm being a little negligent with the placement of my hair care when I can see my skin kind of breaking out along the forehead or kind of in my hairline. I know that I'm probably overdoing it with the hair products. So try and keep the hair products obviously towards the bottom of your hair unless it's designed to go towards your scalp. You obviously want to keep this area fairly clean so you're not having scalp issues, but also keep in mind if you are breaking out on your forehead or around your hairline, it could possibly be because you're being a little careless with your dry shampoo, your hairspray, whatever you're putting on your skin. So just another note you might want to keep in mind. Now this next thing is maybe not so subtle, but it's something that a lot of us struggle with, myself included, is basically lifestyle. So obviously your lifestyle is going to weigh very heavily on your skin as well as just your body in general and your mental state. So some of the things that really impact the skin are habits like smoking, not drinking enough water, not getting enough sleep, consuming too much caffeine. Working out is also something that's super great for your skin because through the process of sweating you're helping your pores kind of purge themselves and also of course there is diet. Now I know it's really hard to try and stay away from those greasy foods or those processed foods. Now I know I'm human too. I still love me some mac and cheese and some mashed potatoes. Take that back potatoes in really any form but like anything else you want to practice moderation and it will heavily impact your skin and I can tell you guys from personal experience when I'm being a little loose with my diet or I'm not working out regularly or maybe I'm drinking too much alcohol or caffeine, I can see it on my skin immediately, especially those like little skin color bumps you'll see on your skin. Usually that has to do with lifestyle choices. Another way you can be ruining your skin is popping those pimples or blackheads or what have you. And I know from personal experience how tempting it is to pop and get rid of all of that yuckiness from inside your pores, especially if it's like inflamed or has a whitehead. 
but I'm telling you this is going to cause a lot of scarring it's going to make the issue worse than it actually is and it oftentimes pushes the bacteria back into your skin so you're really not actually helping your skin or getting that gunk and bacteria and pus out of your skin instead you're pushing it deeper into your skin I highly recommend pimple patches I've talked about them several times on my channel this is from CosRx this is the acne pimple master patch and as you can see they're just like little I literally saved one that I use so I can show you guys they're just like little tiny stickers and as you can see in this one which I'm gonna throw away and obviously wash my hands after I'm done showing you guys this you can actually see the like you can actually see kind of like the gunk at least I hope you can that these things actually pull out so these are super effective you don't even need to like pierce the skin for these to work you just place them on top of the pimple go to bed wake up and you'll see that your little band-aid has like the gunk inside of it and these kind of protect it from excess bacteria from the environment and things like that I like this brand and I also like next care um, acne pimple bandages whatever they're called I'll put links down in the description box below but those are the most effective way at least I think to pop pimples but just try to resist popping them with your fingers or a comedone extractor if you don't know how to use one, all that kind of stuff. Now, we all know how important it is to remove your makeup before you go to bed at night because not only does that prevent breakouts, but also the nighttime is when your skin does the most regenerating recovery and healing of itself. So you want to be sure not to inhibit that in any way. However, I have seen a lot of people using and relying on makeup wipes to remove their makeup at night. Now, I can definitely see the convenience factors of sticking to makeup wipes, especially if you're traveling or if you're just tired from night out and you just want to take your makeup off really quickly. However, the problem with just relying on makeup wipes alone is that you're leaving a lot of chemicals, dirt, and excess makeup on your skin. If you are going to use a makeup wipe, what I'd recommend is at least using the makeup wipe to remove the bulk of your makeup and then going in with a face cleanser to just kind of remove everything else. Or at least rinse it off after you're done using the makeup wipes because I get it. Like I said earlier, I'm human too. Sometimes you cannot be bothered. But at least try to rinse your skin after using a makeup wipe instead of just relying on it alone to remove your makeup. Now since the eyes are the window to the soul, you definitely do not want them to be wrinkly and obviously you want to prevent as many fine lines and crow's feet around your eyes as possible. Now one thing that I have noticed that's pretty common is that a lot of people don't go through the effort of removing their eye makeup, at least the eyeliner and eyeshadow, whatever, mascara kind of left in between your lashes. We all kind of know what this looks like after you've washed your skin, whether it's in the shower or in the sink. You kind of have the leftover black rim around your eyes, especially if you wear heavy eye makeup. I mean, I wear a ton of eye makeup. So what I do is I actually go back in with a makeup remover and I just kind of take a Q-tip and just work it in between my lashes to get all of that excess makeup off my eyes. Now, of course, this is kind of another little tidbit inside this whole point that I'm making here, you want to also make sure that you're moving that makeup remover from your eyes because that's going to leave some residue around your eyes. For me, my eyes are super sensitive. I have to keep them as clean as possible. So I go in with my OcuSoft, which is designed specifically for sensitive eyes. And it's just a soft foam that I use with my fingertips to just kind of work it in there. Obviously my eyes are closed and just kind of remove that makeup remover, rinse and then my cleansing is done. So not only do you wanna make sure that you're removing your eye makeup, the rest of it that's kind of around your eyes, the residual, but you also wanna make sure that you're removing the remover that you're using to remove the makeup. Does that make sense? I hope so. Now this next point also has to do with wrinkles and it is sleeping on your side. Now I am a side sleeper. I love sleeping on my side and for the longest time I was just using normal pillowcases, cotton pillowcases, whatever kind of came with my sheet set. But I have recently switched over to a silk pillowcase because when you're sleeping on your side, obviously your face is kind of disheveled during the night for several hours at a time. So that excess pressure is creating wrinkles and fine lines that you really don't need. So either try not to sleep on your side so much, or if you're like me, invest in a silk pillowcase. They're really not that expensive. They have them on Amazon. I will also link down below the one that I use. And you can comfortably sleep on your side without the tugging and pulling of being a side sleeper. 
Now this is another subtle way that you might possibly be ruining your skin is if you have a high sensitivity to fragrance. Now, of course, fragrance is a pretty big irritant, so of course, besides avoiding it in your skincare, one way that you might have it in your life that you're not noticing is actually in your detergent. So whenever you wash your clothes or wash your sheets, just be sure to try a fragrance-free detergent or just try it for a little bit, see if it improves your skin or if your skin kind of heals itself, but that could also be causing a lot of issues for your skin. Now my last point for this video is probably my biggest point, and if you're gonna take anything away from this video, this is something that you really need to think about is using skincare products that are designed and work with your skin type. Now this is kind of a bigger topic than I wanna really breach in this video. I might possibly make another video talking about this, how to find skincare products that are best for your skin, etc., etc. But a lot of times what I see, especially on the internet and with YouTube, while it's not necessarily a bad thing, I see a lot of people basing their entire skincare routines on someone else's skincare routines. And while it's not a bad idea to find inspiration or recommendations from people who have skin types like you, if you're not evaluating or keeping in mind that their skin type or their skin needs are possibly different, if not very different, from your own skin type and skin needs, you could be using products that are wreaking havoc on your skin and actually making more problems for your skin. So it's your job to kind of pick and pull the pieces that are relevant to you and also do your due diligence in doing research and figuring out maybe ingredients that work well for your skin, ingredients that you know are inflammatory towards your skin, or just products in general that you like versus products in general that you don't like. Knowledge is key here, my friends. Rant over, mic drop. <laughs> Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you found some of these tips helpful and I hope it just kind of opened your eyes to being more aware of what you're putting on your skin or products you're using or maybe products that you shouldn't be using. So as always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!